Your story changed you. Now let it change the lives of others. This is a Candy Factory Mini. So you want to write a book? With Suzette Mullen. Join me as we follow the development of a nonfiction book from idea to completion. We'll explore the creative process as well as the nuts and bolts of pitching and publication. Get a behind the scenes look of my book coaching process as well as clear takeaways and nuggets of wisdom. Let me walk alongside you as you learn to tell your story. Hello, I'm Suzette Mullen, book coach, nonfiction writer, and your host. Welcome to this episode of So You Want to Write a Book. My goal for this mini show is to break down the complex process of becoming an author so that you can finally write the book that's been tugging at your heart. What if you never plan to write a book? I hope that the stories and tips I share each week will help you become a better literary citizen and writer in your personal or professional life. Questions? Leave them in our chat and I'll be sure to answer them next week. So grab a pen or paper, have your phone handy to jot down some notes and let's go. Last week in our first episode, we talked about the astounding number of Americans who would like to write a book someday. In case you missed that episode, it's over 80%. We also talked about the importance of having a burning desire to share your story or message because without that burning desire, everything else will get in the way. This week, we're digging into the reading habits of the American public and why this data matters to you as an aspiring author. I want to thank bestbythenumbers.com, which compiled much of the data I'm going to share with you today. Let's start with the good news. People are still reading books. Here's the big picture data from 2019. Printed books are still going strong and continue to dominate the industry. Nonfiction is hugely popular, especially in printed formats. Fiction's more popular for digital downloads, and audiobooks are the fastest growing product in the publishing industry. Memoirs, biographies, thrillers, and romance are the most popular genres in both print and digital, and self-publishing remains popular. Let's look at the data a little more closely. What generation do you think reads more books than any other? There are five living generations, from oldest to youngest, silent generation, baby boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, and Gen Z. As a late baby boomer, I guess my generation read the most. What do you think? The answer may surprise you. It's millennials, those born between 1981 and 1996. They read the most books per gen- by generation. Baby boomers are close behind. As the parent of two millennials, This surprised me. All the hand-wringing that my generation, my peers did over whether our our, our children would actually read. So you need to understand the reading habits of the people you wanna reach as an aspiring author. Speaking of those habits, what are the different generations actually reading? Gen Z, Gen Z prefers reading humor. Millennials devour health and wellness books. Gen Xers crafts and hobbies. Baby boomers like cookbooks. The silent generation prefers memoirs and biographies. What do you read? My favorite genre is memoir, which is what I write. And I also love upmarket or book club fiction. I'm also on quite a business book buying binge as I've been leveling up my book coaching business. As someone who's thinking about writing a book, may I state the obvious? You need to be reading in the genre you plan to be writing in. And if you're not, you need to ask yourself why. You need to be familiar with the conventions of your genre and engaging and hanging out with other readers who are reading the same types of books that you plan to write. These are the readers you will need to connect with when you're ready to market that book. So back to the data for a minute. How are the different generations reading their books? What format? So what generation or generations prefer reading their books electronically? This answer may surprise you. Every single generation prefers print books over eBooks. 65% of US adults read a print book over the past year versus 28% for eBooks. This also means that 35% of U.S. adults didn't read a book last year, but that's a conversation for another day. I'm not typically an early adopter, but I did jump on the ebook 
wagon quickly. I bought my Kindle. I love sampling books, being able to read them immediately without leaving my home. And I naively thought that ebooks would keep me from having to buy more bookcases or cram more books into the ones I already owned. It didn't work out that way. Soon I realized that I missed holding a book in my hand, seeing how far I had to read, flipping through the pages, underlining, being able to easily lend my book to others. Now I always, almost always buy the print book. So how about audiobooks? One in five Americans say they listen to audiobooks. I'm not huge on them yet, but I know many of my friends are. Maybe it's because I don't spend a lot of time in the car. Audiobooks are perfect for those long car rides. Once I drove, okay, I admit it, I was driven from Houston to New York and we listened to Unbroken, a powerful narrative nonfiction work by Laura Hildenbrand. The ride went so fast, especially from the passenger seat. How about you? What's your reading format preference and why? Beyond these being interesting factoids, why should you care? First and foremost, just like you should be reading in your genre, as an aspiring author, you should be keeping up with trends in publishing. As far as audiobooks go, it's important to be aware that this is a growing edge for the industry and a way for you to reach more readers. But the reality is for first-time authors and or authors who will self-publish, audiobooks are not the first priority. Print is still king and ebooks are the easiest and cheapest to produce. As far as ebooks are concerned, here's what I believe you need to focus on. If your book is available as an ebook, which virtually all books will be today, readers who go to Amazon or another book online book retailer will be sampling your first pages for free. And they'll be deciding on, based on those first pages whether they will buy your book, either the print version or the e version. I'm betting you've done the same. When I'm on Amazon or another online retailer, I almost always look at the table of contents for a nonfiction book and read the jacket pop copy, the, um, the blurb that's on the back um, of the book that tells you a little bit about the book and also a little bit about the author. I almost always also skim the first few pages because if they bore me or they're not speaking to the problem I'm trying to solve, I'm not gonna invest the time, money, or energy to read that book. And I'm certainly not going to buy it. Which is why your first chapter is so important. It literally can make or break your book. How to get those first pages rock solid? We'll be talking about that in much more detail in a future episode as well. But here's a preview. You have to get absolutely clear from page one. You have to know your main point. This is true even for novels. Every book has to have a point. You need to know what it is and you should be writing toward that point from sentence one. If you're fuzzy about your point, it will show. So finally, let's talk about how people get their book recommendations. How do they find out about a book? Let's start with you. How do you get your book recommendations? Do you read a blog? New York Times bestseller lists, ask a friend, wander around a bookstore, see what influencers are reading? Does it depend if you're reading for pleasure or for work or for some other specific purpose? Think about the last time, the last couple of books you purchased. How did you find out about them? What led you to buy them? For me, that's easy. These are the last two books I bought. They're both novels that they're upmarket or book club fiction. I was dying for a book I could escape into and not have to think too much. I asked for recommendations from my email list, which is, is comprised of avid readers and writers. These are my people. I often ask for recommendations from my friends. So where do you get your book recommendations? Start paying attention to what gets you to pick up a book or not. Keep that in mind as you think about your book and how you will market it and get it into the hands of your readers. Thinking about connecting with readers is not just for self-published authors. Unless you're someone like Stephen King, and even if, if you, even if you have the backing of a traditional publisher, you will be responsible for the lion's share of the marketing for connecting with your readers. So the key takeaways I'd like you to come away with for today are people are still reading books. Even with Google at their disposal, people love having a book in their hands. 
Whatever genre you're writing in, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, you need to be reading in that genre as well. Find out where your potential readers are hanging out and hang out there too. And three, start paying attention to how you first hear about a book and then why you decide to buy a particular book or not. Before I preview next week's show, I want to mention a great opportunity for writers coming up in November. NaNoWriMo, which stands for National Novel Writing Month, it's a daunting but straightforward challenge to write 50,000 words of a novel or memoir or other book during the 30 days of November. On November 1st, hundreds of thousands of people around the world begin to write, determined to end the month with 50,000 words of the book that's been rattling around their head or tugging at their heart. If you've been considering developing a writing practice and have been struggling to do so, NaNoWriMo can be the perfect jumpstart. Back in 2012, it jumpstarted my writing and book coaching career. Check out NaNoWriMo.org. And over the next few weeks, I'll be sharing some NaNoWriMo war stories, and some practices and tips on how you can make the best out of your NaNoWriMo experience. So next week, I look forward, we're going to be talking about money and whether you can actually make money writing a book. So, and if you have any questions, please make sure you send them to me at hello at yourstoryfinder.com. And in the meantime, happy reading and writing. So You Want to Write a Book is part of the Candy Factory mini-series and is a proud member of the Candy Factory Collective. You can find the show streaming on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and LinkedIn. And you can subscribe to the audio version anywhere you get your podcasts. Over the past eight years, Suzette has been on a mission to help writers clear the fog and cut through the overwhelm so they can move their ideas out of their head and onto the page. Her later in life coming out journey and her professional experience as an author, accelerator, certified book coach, and dare to lead trained professional, as well as her time at Harvard Law School, Wellesley College, and Columbia Theological Seminary have given her a unique perspective, as well as many of her own stories to tell. When she's not writing or coaching other writers, Suzette can be found on her yoga mat, advocating for the Lancaster LGBTQ plus coalition, or hanging out with her partner, Wendy, and their rescue pup, Lucy. Visit yourstoryfinder.com to learn more about Suzette and her life story, as well as her writing coach offerings. Life's too short to stay stuck, so why not write that book? So You Want to Write a Book is produced by the Candy Factory Collective at the Candy Factory Coworking Campus in Lancaster, PA. Production support by Anna Tran. Administrative support by Ann Kirby, Ariana Henderson, Krisha Marcel, Jason Mundock, and Robert Diggs. Notes and links can be found on the show post at our website, CandyFactoryCollective.com. Candy Factory. Collective.